If you ain't trying to get a bag in, deal. Cause see, I ain't got time for a wheel. I want a real ass who gon' stick with me. I want some real ass who gon' pimp with me. If you ain't trying to get a bag in, deal. Cause see, I ain't got time for a wheel. Hello world, it's your girl I am Breezy, B-R-W-E-Z-E, Breezy with Enata Y, and welcome back, 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 back to my channel, welcome back, 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 back to my channel, welcome back, 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 back to the channel, okay, let's get into it. So as you guys can tell by the title today, we are getting ready to do 22 life lessons. I'm going to give you guys 22 life lessons that I've learned in my 22 years of life. This year, November, it'll be 23, okay? But I'll give y'all the 23rd life lesson, probably on my birthday, if I remember, because that's a long way from now, you know, big Scorpio. But I wrote down 22 life lessons that I've learned, like I said, in my 22 years of living, you know, I've been through quite, quite a bit of things, quite a bit of trials and triumphs and lessons and trials, trials, so... I'm going to give y'all my honest um, opinions on what are the most on what are the most important life lessons that I've learned. The 22 most important because there's a lot of them. So, <clears throat> without further ado, let's get into the video. Okay? So, number one. And these are not in any um, significant order of what I think is most important or what I learned first. It's not in any kind of order. They just are the 22 that I know but the first one would be um, to keep your relationships private okay not a secret but private right and that could look like a lot of different things to people if you want to be private in the aspect you don't want people to know who you're talking to do that if your your privacy um, in your relationship looks like not telling people what y'all doing or when y'all going somewhere, do that. If it looks like not telling people when y'all have issues, that's the big one. Do that one. Do your big one, okay? Um, I strongly, strongly, strongly with a passion advise people, couples especially, not to let people know what your issues are in your relationship. Now, I'm not saying don't seek out help. I'm just saying don't be beefing with your, your your significant other on Facebook or talking about some, oh, he ain't this or she ain't that and ain't and da, 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 like, don't do that on, like, you know what I'm saying, social media or don't go to, and I would say this even, I wouldn't tell my friends, like, I, that, that gets kind of difficult, but I just, like, uh, I feel like I'm a little bit contradicting myself by what I'm about to say about that, but I feel like, and this pertains to your intimacy with your significant other as well. Like, I'm not telling my girlfriends how good my man is in bed. I'm not doing it because that's going to open up curiosity and that's going to cause lustfulness. And then my friend going to be trying my dude and then I'm going to have to, it's going to be a whole thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, then I'm going to have to lose a dude and a friend. Like, no. Or one or the other. So, no. Like, I would never discuss what me and my partner are doing in the bedroom or how great or bad our bedroom life is. I'm not discussing that. And I'll say with all my friends, like, it might be some, you know, if you got a good sibling, you know, and y'all close in age where y'all could talk like that, maybe y'all could have that conversation if you're just looking for help or guidance. But be very careful with the private things in your relationship that you share to everybody else because they're not in your relationship so they're either going to judge or open up curiosity one of the two and both of them could be bad things so just be very careful with the private information from your relationship that you share to the outside world um all right so number two consistency and discipline is key okay um that's in anything in life. It doesn't even matter what it is we're talking about. Consistency and discipline is how you're going to better in everything you do in life. Consistency and, and, and discipline is going to better relationships. It's going to better skills and sharpen yourself. It's going to, you know, like it just goes across every aspect of your life. Whatever it is you're trying to do or a goal or something you're trying to accomplish or attain, make sure you're consistent and disciplined. And I say those two things because consistency 
you need that. Like if you ever stop, you know you you just know for sure if you're never consistent and you stop or hop in and hop out of anything, you're never going to see the full potential of that thing because you are not consistent. Okay? And discipline comes in. I say discipline instead of dedication because you can be dedicated to something. Dedication to me is kind of similar to like passion almost. I know they're not the same. Don't hop down my throat, but they're similar to me personally because you could be dedicated to something or a person and not be disciplined enough to give that thing what it needs to grow. Does that make sense? Like you could be dedicated to a person or committed to a person but if you don't have a discipline to say okay i'm going to make sure that we go on dates every week or that we have these serious conversations every couple months or do check-ins if you're not disciplined enough for those things for that thing to continue to grow and flourish then it's not going to do it's just going to stay what it is you'll never grow um and discipline also comes in when your passion burns out compassion burns out I promise you, it burns out, it comes and it goes. It's just like falling in and out of love. It comes and it goes. So your discipline is that thing where you do it even when you don't want to, right? Even when you're not passionate about it, even when you don't see it doing good, even when you know, you're know you going through all those emotions, discipline is what's going to make sure you get it done. Discipline is my feelings don't matter, I gotta get it done, okay? Um, number three. Never let money move you. Um, that is something that I personally feel like I had to work on growing up. Like, like I'll, I'll say me and my family weren't like bad off. Like we weren't, you know, as stable as some people would be or would say. Um, and that's because both of my parents worked off a of passion, you know. Um, they didn't let money move them. They're not doing nothing just because of money. And a lot of people would say, okay, well, that's why it's not stable or, you know, your your tax bracket isn't growing or whatever the case may be. But I say don't let money move you because money is a dangerous, can be a very dangerous thing in the wrong hands with the wrong motives, right? Um, and for me, I guess just growing up in an entrepreneur household where we work off of passion and what we believe in our vision and our mission that God has gave us, I never really kind of moved off of money, right? But I will say when I was younger, like I didn't go without, but like it was some things that I wanted that I may didn't get when I wanted to have them. Does that make sense? Um, and so I guess when I did start getting a little older and was able to start making money, I, I'm a very frugal person when it comes to my money. I'm not ashamed to hide, you know, of that. That's just me like, because I value financial security. Um, like I don't ever want to be in a position where I can't afford myself. Does that make sense? Like like right now, even still, like I can't afford all the things that I want to give myself at this moment in my life. But the things that I have, like, you know what I'm saying? Like I've been able to sustain myself, but my whole thing is I don't want to survive. I want to thrive in life. I want to live life. And being in survival mode is, is stressful, right? But I say don't let money move you because if you allow money to move you, that money will start to own you. And I don't want nobody telling me what to do, okay? So for me, I move off of passion. I move off the vision that God tells me to, when he tells me to. That's how I operate. So don't ever move off of no money, okay? Don't let the money make you. You make the money, period. Let the money chase you, you baby, okay? Um, number four, instill confidence in yourself because beauty is in the, in the eye of the beholder. Now, um, instilling confidence in yourself is self-love, you know, just to sum it up, like, make sure that you're taking care of you, like, for, for me, I've learned and I never thought I was the type of person because, or I'll say the type of person first. So for me, growing up, like, I ain't never really cared like my appearance. Like, not like I looked bad or didn't look good or nothing like that. I just, I ain't care what nobody thought or, you know what I'm saying? Like, baby, if you go back and find some of my old pictures, like I'm wearing knee high rainbow cheap socks with black forces and sparkly shorts and a tank top in the summertime like i didn't care like i was gonna put this shit on regardless i'm gonna put on what i'm gonna put on i ain't care but the older i get the more the way i treat myself and appear 
to myself, my own appearance and my eyes is a form of self-love for me. Like making sure that I have my hair done, getting my nails done, making sure I have a nice pair of shoes and a cute little bag. I don't really care about the clothes because I can, you can make something look like something, you know what I'm saying? As long as you got the right accessories. So my shoes, my bag, my jewelry, my hair, you know what I'm saying? Taking care of my skin and my pearly whites, like those things are becoming self-love and self-care to me and they instill confidence in me um because although i do think i'm a very beautiful and pretty girl um it's easy especially being an influencer and trying to be an upcoming youtuber and so artists you know doing music and in the social media world and entertainment it's very easy to um have low self-esteem and kind of compare start to compare yourself to others that you see who are in positions you want to be in right um admiration can very easily become envy or jealousy and we have to watch that right like it's not oh how did she get there oh my gosh it should be wow what do i need to do to get there you know what's going to be my process or my steps to that type of success or to afford those type of things or to look like her you know it's not oh my god her abs are super ripped like what why would why did she get that it should be oh my gosh what was her diet what was her workout routine like how do i get there right and so that's why i say it's a very thin line between um admiration and jealousy or envy so be careful of that but always 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 um instill confidence in yourself if you're the type of person where affirmations work for you personally um I don't really think that they work for me in the sense of confidence. Like, like I'm not the person that could look in the mirror and be like, you're beautiful, you're smart, you're intelligent, and that works for me. I don't, I've tried it and it didn't really do nothing for me, um, but it works for different people. Um, but for me, my confidence was in how I decided to treat myself, buying myself flowers, taking myself out to lunch, um, car rides with music, um, or, or listening to motivational talks, reading books, those things is what instill confidence in me. So find your form of self-care and self-love and continue to instill that confidence. Um, number six, realize everybody ain't you. You got to realize it. That's something I'm going to feel, I feel like I'm going to struggle with for the rest of my life. Um, because I'm an empath, um, it's very, I always, and then like, I always, over everything over every emotion like i be over um like i over care i over share sometimes i i love oh you know like abundance like i have an abundance of emotions um especially an abundance of empathy and it's very difficult because i give so much to everybody else and i'm pouring into everybody cup and i'm there for everybody and i'm this and i'm that to everybody and it's very hard and um, it's very disheartening and heartbreaking when you don't get those things back in return. Even though you weren't looking for them, when you need them to not have them, it, it kind of sucks. It's like, it sucks ass, to be honest. Um, and so I just had to realize that everybody's not me. Everybody doesn't love like I love. Everybody doesn't care like I care. They're not going to give me the shirt off their back. That's just not them. And when, the moment you realize that, the easier... Um, it'll be on you when you don't receive those things back even when you need it right um not to say you shouldn't get those things back because in any relationship you're supposed to benefit from one another that's the purpose of a relationship in my opinion any relationship parent child sibling friend um spouse or partner you're supposed to benefit from i feel like benefit from every relationship in your life right um whether that and that doesn't have to be financially or materialistic that could be emotionally that could be knowledge that could be um um any very small thing but if i'm not benefiting from this relationship i don't want it okay because if i know me personally i'm going to give and give and give and give i need something back i need something back or my cup gonna be empty and then we gonna both be looking stupid so yeah just just try to remember that you know in any situation that you're dealing with everybody ain't you and that's just what it is. Uh, number seven, forgive for you and not for them. Oh, that's one. That's a that's a that's a strong one because 
I've been in some predicaments where, you know, I've had to forgive or like I've even been in positions where I've held grudges and I'm like, I could never, you know, forgive this person for what they did to me or da 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 da. And when you don't forgive, I ain't saying forget, but forgive. When you don't forgive and, and let that hurt go, it's going to eat at you. And meanwhile, yes, they're the one who did wrong, but you don't stop talking to them. So it's not like they feeling the heat of whatever mistake or wrong that they did to you every day. So they don't forgot about it or they're moving on with their life. They like, well, ain't nothing I can do about it. She don't want to let it go. So, you know what I'm saying? They're moving on with their life. Um, while you, on the other hand, if you see them post something or you think about them or something reminds you of them, you got that little ugh, in the bottom of your stomach or in your chest where you're like, ugh, I can't believe such and such did this to me. I remember when such and such and such and such and you're harboring that, that hate or that hurt and that pain in your heart. And that's just nasty, girl. That's nasty, okay? So remember, whenever you're in a situation where you, you have to forgive someone or you need to forgive someone, you're doing it for you, for your heart, for your peace and your mind not for them okay because still leave them where they at best believe you, you forgave but you ain't forgot so leave them where they at baby okay um number eight you will outgrow people and that is okay um that was a big one for me because um i've had some some friends that i had like for a long very long time like half my life i'm 22 so i've had some friends for decades um that I grew up with and I just did not want to let them go like I was like we're gonna be friends for life like we're gonna have kids and get to grow up together and you know what I'm saying like it's just like that's a lot of time that's a lot of bond you know to just let go I ain't gonna say throw away because it wasn't thrown away on my end but it sucks because I was the one who had to make this decision to release that person and let them go because they kept hurting me um, and it sucks when you are the one who's getting hurt and you have to make the decision to walk away at this too. Like, that sucks. Like, why you couldn't just walk away? Um, so, yeah. Um, mm, you outgrow people. And that, that's essentially what it was, I feel like, with, with this one particular situation. I'm talking, I'm using it as an example. I outgrew my friend, y'all. Like, they weren't on the same page as me. Like, they didn't grow mature wise like their communication didn't grow like it was just no growing like you was the same you know same person from when we were in high school freshmen in high school like you ain't grown up yet and we grown so um you just outgrow people and you outgrow situations and it might hurt and it sucks but it's okay you'll be okay you'll find new people to grow with and then at some point you're gonna outgrow them too so that's just the cycle of life like at some point you're gonna be ready to move on to the next page and that person you were growing with might not be ready like that's just a part of life it's, it's bound to happen at some point so don't be afraid of outgrowing people letting them go and moving on with your life okay um number nine control your reactions and responses Woo, baby that's a good one because reactions and responses um it just like control your control your emotions babes like i'm not saying hide them i'm not saying don't feel them but simply control your reactions and responses um because they can get you in a lot of trouble like when you're in the heat of the moment and you're feeling you know however it is you're feeling your reaction and response is everything right because you're going to feel the emotion first but the reaction and response after you felt that emotion that is a decision I hate to say it because I'm talking about myself too, but because I've been in some situations where, you know, I was going through an emotion right then and there. And then I chose, I made the decision to react or respond however I did. Right. And that ain't always been in a good way. Like I may have had some, a little toxic tendency in my response or reactions before, you know, and I'm going to blame it on emotions because that's what it was. But I can't blame it on emotions because that was also my decision because after you have realized what the emotion is you feel, you sat there and said, this is how I'm going to respond. You let it out. You let it out. Like, I, I just got to, I feel like that's that's correct. Like, <laughs> when you are angry or upset at somebody and you're really, really hurt and you realize, okay, I'm angry, I'm hurt and upset, now I'm going to go slash his tires. That's a decision that you made. 
okay i ain't never did that but i'm just saying or now i'm finna go fight this girl that's a decision that you made okay that's your reaction and respond but you decided on that you knew you were angry you knew you were upset and you sat there it's like premeditated like you knew what you was gonna go do you said you sat there and was like this what i'm gonna do i'm finna cuss this i'm finna beat this i'm finna da -da 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 -da. you decided you made the decision so control your reactions and responses make better decisions me too we're gonna do this together um 10 everybody ain't your friend and everybody ain't your partner all okay? right this is a good one because I just recently, I'm going to do a story time, but I recently went through a situation where, you know, one of my friends, she had an issue with how I decided to do a pro bono um, piece of work for her that I get paid for. Um, and it got nasty real quick. And I was like, you could never have been a friend based off of how you just reacted to me. Um, and that's just, that's just, you know, it happens like that. But you have to really realize, like... I'm like really not, like the older I get, the more I'm like, I ain't playing with your weird friend. No. You could be a home girl, you know what I'm saying? But you could be an acquaintance, you could be somebody I chill with, kick it with, go out with. But I feel like a friend is somebody that should be able to, to be there for you in every aspect of your life, like, right? And to be honest, if I'm, I'm saying that like currently, I got one friend and I don't care what nobody say. Um, Hey, Jakira, my bestie. Like, she she is there for every aspect of my life. I can talk to her about relationship stuff. She is, I ain't gonna say she ain't never judged me because everybody judge, but she ain't never, like, did it in a rude way or, you know what I'm saying? She's always honest with me. But I can talk to her about relationship stuff, about family. I can talk, we can go out and club and party. We can drink. We can sit in the house and chill. We can read together, listen to motivational videos together. We can pray together, cry together, laugh together. Like if you have somebody who can be be a part of every personality aspect and characteristic of you if they can be a part of those two things every personality trait that you have they can be a part of and every characteristic they can be a part of that is a friend right whereas like one of my personality traits she a party girl you know what i'm saying like i'm going out i'm twerking i'm shaking i'm drinking like i have friends who i just specifically go do that with like some of my friends who i do that with i can't sit and pray with them like they're not going to have business talks with me they ain't entrepreneurship minded you know what i'm saying or i have some friends where these my friends who i'm going to win I need spiritual guidance. I need motivation. I need to talk to God. I need somebody to help me pray or depict something or a situation. Um, but they ain't my friends who gonna sit here and have a business talk. They work nine to fives and that's cool. Or I have entrepreneurship friends who we gonna go to business brunches. We're gonna make business plans, come up with, you know what I'm saying, branding and concepts, but they don't wanna go shake booty. They don't wanna chill in the house. All they wanna do is business. You know what I'm saying? So you have acquaintances for different aspects and parts of you in your life and then you have friends who are there for all of the above and currently i just got one my one my, my bestie like she's a part of every portion of my life every portion of me um so yeah be careful because everybody ain't your friend everybody ain't your partner okay what more three say yeah uh next number 11 don't let anyone change your heart that's strong okay that's hard that could be a little difficult but i say that because for me i have like i said i've been in situations with friends and your relationships with guys where like they didn't did me so dirty or you know what i'm saying did something so bad and hurtful to me it just made me be like bro i ain't never hanging around females again because y'all shiesty shady mother or i don't ever want to date again because i can't believe you know what i'm saying such and such did this to me like you know and that's what i mean by don't let people change your heart because i have been in situations like i said and i've said those things where i'm like i ain't dealing with none other guy because i can't believe like after all i did and gave important to this man he didn't did x y and z to me i ain't talked to none other dude because i love him and da, 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 da. i've been there but i had to realize that that's not fair and that's not true it's not fair to me for one because i am you, you would be changing your heart and your perspective based off this one experience with this one person who just wasn't for you. That's not fair to you or anybody else who tries to pursue you. And that's the same thing for friends, like the girl situation I was talking about. Like, 
I don't want to be friends with no other females or I'm scared to be friends with girls because they're, you know what I'm saying? Like, I've been there, but if I would have been like that, I'd now have some acquaintances, some girls who I'm hanging out with currently, you know, with influencing social media. And if I would have let that one situation with that girl, you know, change my mind, then I would just be all alone and by myself. Like, I wouldn't be meeting new people who are in the same field who I can bounce ideas off of and this and this and that. So... Don't let people change your heart or perspective just because that one bad experience with that person because they just weren't for you, okay? Find you some new people. Find you, find your tribe, like for real. Uh, number 12, all money ain't good money, okay? All money ain't good money, okay? It's just a fact. It's just what it is, like, and that's in anything. Like, I've had jobs where... So I worked at Amazon, y'all. Um, this was a while ago. I didn't work at Amazon. That was like two, three years. Um, I think I was still in school. So that was 2021 or 20 in 2020 where I um, I worked at Amazon. And it started off good money, but they was working me like a dog, like a dog slave. Okay, same thing when I was working at Nike, where both of them warehouses. They, it was some nice little money, but it wasn't good money. Like. I was making money, but it was not good money because they was working me like a slave. They weren't good to their people. They didn't know how to talk to people. It was making me angry. I ain't never want to go to work. I ain't want to talk to nobody. It changed my whole entire mood. And so that's what I mean by all money and good money. Same thing for entrepreneurship. Like every client that's got some money to give you, that don't mean you got to take it. Like I have declined clients. I have fired clients because I just don't like to work with them. I had this one client if y'all know I'm a graphics designer, aka D brand specialist, I am breezybrandy.com. Don't play with me. Um, but I had this one client I was doing a logo for, and she was she was getting on my nerves. <laughs> I'm talking about she was giving me so much trouble. Like, first off, my logos is a certain price. You get one edit or revision with it, must be sent in 48 hours, or it closes out the order. That's just my rules and policy. But I was trying to be nice, you know. She was like, I'll give you an extra this or this or that for extra revision, which is more than what I charged. For an additional revision so i was like okay cool but then she kept wanting more and more and more and it was just like girl i don't even want your money no more i really don't like you you're stressing me out you're stressing me out leave, please leave me alone go away and so i had to fire her because here you go y'all money baby just leave me alone please please stop talking to me don't email me again because you emailing me six times a freaking day day and night you calling like go away please go away so yeah all money I ain't good money, baby. Uh, number 13, social media is my reality. I don't really got too much to, like, dive into on that. It's just what it is. Please know that social media is not reality. Right? And I'm not saying that what people post on social media isn't their real life all the time or that they don't have those things that we see or don't look like that i'm just saying when i say social media is in reality what i mean is you don't you have no idea what it took for that look right like this girl got a nice booty you know what i'm saying slim waist pretty hair got a a beans you know what i'm saying or audi or, or she in a mansion or this guy got this in this jewelry you don't know what it took for them to get that and so social media is not reality you have no idea what it took for them to get that right like they there could be some life insurance policy money they could have lost a loved one and you know this is how they're grieving by buying all this fancy stuff you have no idea what it takes for people to get the things that you see on social media you have no idea so social media ain't reality like don't bank on that don't be envious never be jealous because you have no idea you don't don't ever want to be in somebody else's shoes right you can admire the shoes that they walk in but don't ever envy or want to be in anybody else's shoes because you might get a rude awakening you know what i'm saying god might put you in their shoes and you might go through the same things they went through to get that and that might not be what's you know what i'm saying what's for you that might be too much for you so just don't like social media ain't really reality number 14 um hard times don't last okay you might have a rough patch but that is why I love them all, babe, okay? But this is why I love them all. So, yeah, hard times don't last. Like, I'll tell y'all, my last year in college in 2021, 
yeah, 2020, 2021, my last year in college, I was struggling. I was having the hard, hardest time, like hard, hardest time of my life, okay? I was having the hardest time of my life. Like, oh my God, it was so difficult that last year, 2020, um, I started the year off like that year start 2020 is what it was not 2021 because I graduated then but 2020 just started off like the hardest year of my freaking life like I had you know just lost a couple family members um I had surgery February 2020 school was just started mind you I had surgery on my eye my teachers were not cooperating with me they like well you still gotta get this done and we're not gonna extend this day fool I had surgery on my eyeball I can't I can't even see. They're telling me don't read, don't look at a computer, don't stress nothing out. I couldn't have a phone for weeks. And you mean to tell me y'all ain't gonna extend it for a surgery? You got a doctor's note? Like, what is this? This is not like life. This is not adulting. This is just y'all being some buttholes because I can't see. So you saying you want me to drive to school? Like, what is you talking about? Um, but that that was hard, a hard year. Like I was depressed at the time. I was doing school but I was also doing real estate school as well and I couldn't pass my final exam took it the first time I damn near cried because I did cry I ain't gonna lie I, did. I think I cried the second time but I damn near cried first time because I was only like if I you could only miss I think three questions and or two questions you gotta miss two questions to pass and I missed three and it broke my heart because it took me like three four hours to do the test and Three, four hours of testing is a lot. It's ex it's extensive. Like, it's stressful for me. I'm not, like, I'm not a good test taker. Like, I can do the work, but I'm not a good test taker. It gives me anxiety. And I sick and guess a lot on tests. Um, so, it was hard to do that for three, four hours long and sit there and memorize. And I had studied, y'all. I had a thousand flashcards. And I just don't know what happened. I ain't get it. And I was like, okay, phew, breathe. I'm going to take it again immediately because... You know, if it's fresh off your mind, is what I was thinking. Because I've done it before and I've, it worked. But it didn't work. I missed, I missed three again. And I was like, bro, okay. I cried. Because I was like, how is this possible? What is happening? I know I'm not slow. I know I know this information. Like, I've studied for months and months and months. I don't understand. So, I took a break. And then on the next day, I went to my mom and I was crying, y'all. I was like, I hate to feel. I know it's life. But I was crying. I was mad, frustrated. Like I said, I was already depressed. Um took the third time with my parents and we all still missed them questions i was like oh my god this must not be meant to be i'm never doing real estate again i was scarred <laughs> i was scarred y'all by feeling it at that time in my life i was really scarred um it was very traumatic because i was going through a lot i just felt like i was feeling everything in life i was feeling real estate i was feeling calculus in college my job was driving me crazy i didn't want to go like i went to sleep and woke up to go to work and was just like i'm about to cry because i gotta go to work like i was just depressed in every aspect of my life um, and when the year rolled around 2021, my life got great. Like, credit score hit hit over 700, and I got a new car, and I'm getting long, um, you know, personal loans, and my finances are looking good, and I'm graduating college. I can't believe I did it, and you know, and so that just lets you know that bad times do not last. They're not gonna last for long. It's just the balance of life. It's not gonna last forever. So know that even when you're going through it. Uh, 15 be kind because karma's a bitch that's all i got to say be kind be kind be kind be kind um i've had some moments where i've you know like i feel like i'm a, I'm a genuinely kind person um but like i've had moments where only when somebody has done something wrong to me real wrong like i might have a little spite for a pity thing i think about doing in my mind but i, I just be like mm, i don't want the karma because god gonna give it to them they gonna rip what they sold so I'm not gonna hop in their business. I'm gonna let God teach them their list. I don't gotta do it, okay? Cause karma gonna get me too, and I don't want no, no piece of that pie. Um, 16, find your people, keep them close and value them. That's what I was talking about earlier about finding your tribe. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like find you a good five. Like it could be more than five, but just generally like a number that popped up. Find you a good five to seven people that can, I say seven, cause seven stands for the number of completion. But find you a good five to seven people who can keep you grounded, keep you reminded of your values and your morals, who can educate you, who can talk you off that angry ledge or that petty or spitefulness you're about to do. Like people who know what you want out of life and who can remind you of that. Um, 
find your people keep them close and let them know you value them like you can value a person but let them know you value them okay um 17 do you boo it's just as simple as that i'm not going to elaborate on it just do you boo do you okay always number 18 um what you, oh yeah 18 keep your mouth off of other people's situation okay because woo, the tongue is powerful it's very powerful so when i say keep your mouth off of other people's situations don't be so quick to don't be so quick to judge people and you know share your opinion on their situation because you don't know like People could have been through similar things or gone through similar, you know what I'm saying, situations. So, God forbid, but say like, you know, somebody's car got jagged or something like that and they call was unlocked. Don't get to, this is just a scenario. I don't wish that on nobody. Don't get to blaming them. Oh, you left your car unlocked in this neighborhood. Or da, 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 da. You should have known better because I knew better. It happened to me and I knew not to lock my door. They just put my window. You don't know what, why they left their door unlocked. Stay out of their business. They could have left their door unlocked because... They know they a lot. They, but like, yeah, just keep your mouth off of other people's situations. You don't have to always give your two cents. I tell people always time, do not give unsolicited advice or opinions. Like, I know it's social media out there, and that's what people do on a regular. I'm learning to deal with that now. Like, people always feel like they got to give me some type of advice or feedback or criticism, and it ain't always positive. And so I don't be wanting it. But I also personally have to remember this is what I signed up for, kind of, because I ain't going to say that because I ain't signed up for that. But that it is social media and that it happens. I ain't signed up for it, but I know that it happens. And I just have to prepare myself for not responding to the, the retarded shit that people say to me because they don't know me and they don't know my situation. Right? Um. So, yeah. I'm going to tell y'all a, a quick little rundown. So, I... For these, keep your mouth off people's situations and unsolicited advice and feedback. I made a post not too long ago of just like a marketing little thing. It wasn't nothing special. I just filmed in my computer screen of my website. And it's like, get you a graphic designer, brand specialist, blah, blah, blah. And a young lady come in and was like, would you like some feedback? And I messaged her because I was kind of confused what, what I would need feedback on. It wasn't like it was a piece of artwork or nothing. It was just my computer screen flyer. I didn't understand. So I'm like, hey, what, what, what is it that you were trying to get feedback on? Um, and she was like, I just, you know, wanted to ask because some people don't want it or da da da. And I was, she was like, Do you want it? And I was like, No, thank you. Um, and I didn't mean no harm by that. So I posted, um, this is a couple days later after that, I posted and was like, Hey, I'm looking for some like minded business women, blah, 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 blah. And she commented and was like, How do you expect other business women to want to hang out with you when um, you don't know how to take feedback or criticism and da da da? Um, and it did irritate me and she was like how you you know you're unteachable because it was really her saying unteachable um because i'm not unteachable i feel like i'm very open to to learning like i love to learn like teach me something baby but just that situation in particular i didn't feel like what was the juice was gonna give me some feedback on it was just a computer screen i didn't, I didn't get it which i could have just took it but i didn't want it and why i didn't want it this is what i mean by you don't know people's situations because that entire week i had been dealing with people just coming for me on social media for no reason like i don't do nothing to nobody i don't comment on people's stuff i don't i don't do nothing and people had just been coming for me like it was a little funny picture somebody posted and i reacted with a laugh and she and other people did too and she commented and tagged me it was like what's funny and i was like oh my god like it's funny the picture is funny what you mean what's funny other people laugh you ask them what's funny so why you come for me um and then i dealt with somebody i made a a real saying how like it was like one of the little rant to reels like i don't like my nine to five but i don't know why i don't like it because it's free money i don't do nothing blah 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 blah. and some girl was like oh that's not cute you're an adult and you're lazy you don't want your job and it's good money and da 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 and i'm like girl like it's a part of adults and people go to work all the time and don't like their job like it's not that deep i ain't saying i ain't grateful but i don't like my job like that's just not what i want to be doing but i'm doing it because i got an adult and had a responsibility but i just had been dealing with all week of people just like getting on me for nothing like and so when she was trying to give me feedback i was like i just don't want it like i just didn't want it because i didn't know if it was gonna be positive or not or you know saying criticism and i just didn't want it i don't want, I don't want nobody to tell me nothing nothing on social media right now don't talk to me that's how i felt 
um, and she didn't know that. But me and her talked and worked it out. But just just an example of what I mean by you never know people's situation, so keep your mouth off of them. Um, what? Okay, uh, 19, don't interfere with other people's lessons. I was just telling y'all about that. Now, this comes in from me because I'm I'm an empath and I have a lot of empathy to give. Um, I always be trying to save people. Like, when they're going through something, you know, I'm always trying to help and do what I can and give solutions and stuff. And don't be interfering with other people's lessons because God going to give you one too, right? He's in the middle of trying to teach them something and you're trying to save them from his lesson. Uh-uh, that's what he's saying. Get out the way. Let me go break your car down. Because you over here trying to get them rides and I'm trying to teach them discipline and that they need to go to work and get a job and stop laying on their butt so they'll have, you know, whatever or whatever the situation. Just everything is not meant for you to interfere. Everything is not meant for you to help. You're not always meant to help somebody. Um, and I'll say even in times when I'm trying to help people, it's not always God moving me, it ain't always in my heart. Way be in my heart, but you know, you, you I feel like you can tell the difference when God, like, it's like gotta do and like, oh, I want to help, I feel bad. Like, them, oh, I want to help, I feel bad. That's not for you. Like, if it ain't in your heart, okay, you need to help this person. Then, that, then, then mind your business because they stay listening and you're gonna get one too if you in for it. Um, number 20, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. Woo, hallelujah, hallelujah. It's not what you say. It is how you say it. I don't care what you say. I don't, I don't care what nobody got to say. It's not what you say. It is absolutely how you say it. It is how you say it. There's nothing else I can say about that. Like, it's not what you say. You can say anything. But how you deliver it, how you say it, is going to determine my response. Like, that's going to determine how, they, how that conversation goes up. Uh, number 22. It is okay to move on without closure. It's so hard for me to say because I'm definitely one of them people, y'all. I need closure. I don't care what's going on. I need, like, I need that last conversation of why this happened, why that happened, how you feel, and you tell me or how I feel, and I tell you. I be needing that last little conversation for our part ways. But recently in, you know, two instances that I just went through this past year, I ain't getting no closure. And at first, it was driving me crazy. It was driving me like, like this. It was driving me crazy because I wanted to have that last talk. Like, I need to talk and get it all out. Like, I need to tell you everything. Um, but I'm so proud of me. I went with these two last situations with no closure. I just cut off cold turkey. Nothing to say. We ain't got nothing to talk about. Just bye. And went on about my life. And... It was difficult for, like I said, those first two, three months. It was hard. I was like, can I just message them? Can we just talk about it? Like, I just need one conversation because I'm lost. But after a while, like, of just focusing on me, I ain't need that closure. I don't need to say nothing to you. Everything you did to me to make me walk away was enough closure. It was enough. There's nothing. We ain't got nothing else to talk about. I ain't got nothing else to say. So, it is okay. It is okay to move on without closure, y'all. Sometimes even necessary. Um, and then number 22, the last one. Um, find your lane and ride them up to the wheels fall out. Okay? And then when the wheels fall out, park, stop the car, get out, and get the ride. When you get tired of running, jog. When you got tired of jogging, walk. When you get tired of walking, crawl. When you get tired of crawling, pray to God. Because then you tired, all right? But, yes, find your lane and enjoy it, okay? Like, because you the best. You the best. You the best. Not on my block. Not in my lane. But on your block and on your lane, for sure. Okay? So, that's just what it is. So that was my 22 life lessons that I've learned in my 22 years of life. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, I feel like this was very informative and educational. Like, please like, share, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you know every time I post another video. So yeah, like, share, comment, subscribe, comment, subscribe, comment, like, share, comment, subscribe, comment, subscribe. And I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye. 
If you ain't trying to get a bag, then deal. Cause see, I ain't got 